Hello, fabricators. Big news out of Microsoft Build Day One. So many wonderful fabric announcements, but what we're going to focus on is real time intelligence and the newest co pilot that we have for KQL. And that's what we're covering next on Tales from the Field. It is so fitting that last week's video was our end-to-end -end real time analytics tutorial that this week and today we get to show you how to be able to use Copilot in KQL query sets. This is a really big deal because a lot of people that I talk to have gaps in understanding how to be able to write KQL. Now, keep in mind, one of the things that we've demoed in the past is that you can write T-SQL against your KQL databases within Microsoft Fabric. That was a massive advancement that we got with the product and the platform to make that accessible to all of us that know and love T-SQL and are very familiar with that. But when you are looking to write KQL queries, it, there's no better place than utilizing Copilot. You know, before we get too far, if this is your first time finding your way over to Tales from the Field, give us a like and give us a subscribe. We drop content on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. On Mondays and Wednesdays, we have our MS Tech Bits. On Tuesdays, we have our Azure, Azure Data Community Roundtable, where we feature content from the Azure Data Community for the Azure Data Community. And today is Wednesday. It's an MS Tech Bit. So let's go ahead and get over that great content, and let's look at the new Copilot for KQL query sets. We're on our Fabric workspace and I'm in my KQL database. I'm going to go ahead and create a new KQL query set for us to be able to use against our data. I go ahead and click on that. We're going to name it exactly what it is. Tales from the field copilot. That's our demo. I'm going to get rid of everything that it go ahead and it populates in here from the beginning because I want this to work from scratch and we click copilot. Now this opens our copilot window and let's get straight to it. I'm going to say, let's use the IIS geolocation table and the columns that have longitude and latitude in their names. Remember, that's not their names. I'm just specifying it. And the timestamp column to render a scatter chart with a kind map. See what we get. A little bit of processing, Copilot on the back end. Oh, there we go. Now we click the insert button. It takes our code, it formats it, puts it in with our comments. You can see the comment that we actually had is up top. I love that. Now let's go ahead and run it. Oh, there's some fabric magic right there. I can see the data that I have. It's rendered in the map the way I wanted it. It generated this KQL, but I want to limit this, right? Let's rewrite the last query to only give me the longitude and latitude from the last 30 minutes. I, I misspelled give there. I said Tib, but let's leave it. Return the longitude, the latitude, and the timestamp and then render this with a scatter chart over the period of, I'm uh, sorry, over a map. And we're doing this for 30 minutes. How does it do? Gives us the prompt, gives us the code. Now we execute this. Boom, a little bit more of that fabric magic. Okay, now this is cleaned up. I can start to use this in the Power BI report we used in the real-time analytics. I didn't have to write any of this KQL code. We're using plain English. Now let's go to the more difficult one, to the astronauts column. Because remember, and let's take a look at this, because the astronauts table is a little more complicated in the way we need to extract this. So if we open up this, we see that the people is a dynamic field. Let's go ahead and write a SQL statement to be able to grab our top one value so we can see what the format of this is. Just as a quick reminder, we'll say select top one from ISS astronauts. That's right, Mr. Potter. You can use T-SQL. We run this, and here we go. You can see there's the format. We've got name, we've got craft in there, but we need to extract that. So let's ask Copilot. Um, the ISS astronauts table has a column named people. People is a string that contains multiple nested values, people and craft. Write a query that expands the value people and craft and returns all values within it. Do this for only the top one row of the table based on the X opt-in and queued time. Remember, that's our timestamp that we're going to use. Now, it's going to think on this for a minute, and this is a more complex statement, but here we go. Let's insert this. Looks good to me. Uh, it's a little close to my SQL statement. Let's get rid of the SQL statement. Now we can just highlight and we can run this. Oh, more fabric magic. We got this, and we've got it extracted, so that way we have our data. 
Well, that's absolutely fantastic. Copilot is a very, very powerful tool. So now when we have our KQL database, we have multiple tools to be able to assist us there. We have the capability to write T-SQL, and you just saw me do that in the demo. We have the capability to write KQL, but if we're not super familiar, we can use plain English to be able to get this KQL. Remember, longitude and latitude, those aren't the names of those columns. It's IIS underscore position longitude, IIS underscore position latitude. But I could simply refer to it and it found the columns with the names longitude and latitude in there and it parsed that for me. This is absolutely mind blowing stuff. Well, you know where we want to keep this going down in the comments. Sound off. Are you excited about Copilot and your KQL query sets to be able to help you with real time intelligence? Are you excited about Microsoft Build? I'd love to hear about the thing you're most excited about. Maybe we can make a video off of it. All right. As always, thank you so much for joining us on Tales from the Field. Be good to one another out there and take care. Bye, everybody. I try to do this every day, call it replication. Wake up. Today's